Hello everybody. Uh, I know it's been a long time. I'm working on it. There's just been a family issue, health, severe health issue with my father for over a year now. And it's limiting my time. <clears throat> so I have to travel three hours away uh, to go see him and the doctors and everybody else. So enough of that. Uh, I have a big match coming up this weekend. Uh, could be close to 600 shooters. It's over two days. Last year, I think it was 587 <clears throat> total count. <clears throat> and uh, I had a couple people ask me, you know, are you still using your Johnny Glocks and, and, and that kind of stuff? So I thought I'd go over uh, what I have, what's in both these guns, and uh, what I carry in a, uh, a range emergency kit to work on if ever needed. First off, the oldest of the race guns, 17. I did the stippling myself. Uh, I am not a professional stippler by any means, and I was really wasn't worried about looks, although I did try to keep the lines straight so it didn't look like a kindergartner did it. And they are deep, and they're rough, and it's that way for a purpose. And I also did the underlug trigger guard, uh, here, I'll give you a little tip. When I put my finger in there, the size of my hands, my finger does not go straight across. And that's not a natural grip for me. It's on an angle like this. So when I do my uh, back finger grooves on any of the blocks, the HK, uh, anything I have, I always put it on a slight angle with this end being higher than this end, and it's a natural fit. There's no adjusting. I put my hand in there and it's the same every time, every time. And then I do the front. I don't understand why people stipple up here. Uh, I like it smooth, so, cause I got the grip everywhere else and that was ready to go. Now, there was an issue I had with both these guns last year at the match and I had to stop and go to the armorer's tent and go over with him. And which he even said, I can't do nothing for you really because none of the, you know, the only thing stock on this is the, is the frame and the slide. Um, but I told him what was happening and it was erratic is what was, was driving me crazy. <clears throat> what would happen is I'd put my thumb on here and it would be against the slide. And these are so sensitive. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Glocks uh, built this one complete and worked on this one after I built it a few times. So they are so sensitive, just by riding my thumb on the side, it was single single action. It was like one shot, and a racket, one shot. And then occasionally it would work fine, you know, sit there go like this, and then back to one shot. And I thought, what the hell? So, and I was using this last year, was the new race gun. This was backup. So I was using this one that was doing it. And I thought, okay, I mean, I wasn't really worried about it. I knew Johnny, if anything was wrong, Johnny would take care of it. But the fact is, I was at the match when this was happening. So I switched to this gun, and I start, and it's doing the same thing. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? So I go see the armor. He looks at everything. He's like, okay, everything looks fine to me. He goes, let's go out to the uh, practice, range, or practice bay, and we'll shoot. So I shot and it was doing the same thing. Shoot one or two, then lock. I had to jack or uh, racket and single shot racket. So I tried both of them doing the same thing. He said, let me try them. He shot them and they both worked flawlessly. He went through, I think, two or three magazines on each one. He's go ahead and shoot it again. He stood beside or right behind me. He's like, stop. After three shots, he just stopped. Because I found out what, what you're doing. I said, what? He goes, you are riding your thumb. Your thumb just barely touching that slide. And when you do that, when you put your grip down, you're stopping it from doing its natural action completely. So I moved over, and by God, he was right. And I've been shooting for, shooting and reloading for 47 years. So I've never had two guns fine-tuned as much as these to where it affected it. <clears throat> so... A resolution for this just just was on me. It was nothing to do with the guns. I had a guy ask me, why do you have 
red and blue stripes on your thumb rest. Some call it a brake pedal, some call it a throttle pedal, some call it just a thumb rest, whatever. They're like, why do you have the red and blue on there? I mean, just to, because of the, the colors? I was like, no, I said, that's to remind me when I get up there that when I put my thumb on, I'm over on the blue, you know, I'm on the paint. I'm away, so I'm on the paint and I got the, the thumb rest. I'm starting to get that natural feel, which that's actually better out there because I, I can really stop the recoil, bring it down and stop it and hold it real tight. Although there's not much recoil in either one, but still there's always going to be some you're trying to get rid of it or control as best you can. So that's why I did that on that. And once I did that and it's just a physical or a ver visual reminder, that's it. And I've never had that issue since. Both these guns have been working flawlessly now for over a year. The only issue was my, my own thumb. Uh, the uh, Seymour RT2, R, RTS2s are working fabulous. And they do have, now I can turn it on, uh, and the camera's gonna show it obviously a lot bigger than it really is. I don't even know if I'll be able to do it. I'm working on a cell phone. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not in there. But it's, it's perfect size. Per, no no uh, halo effect or nothing on these. And I've had them now. I have four of them on four, four guns I use for competition. Uh, they are probably around the $400 mark each. When I got them, unfortunately, they were $420 or 425 then they went down to like 399, then back up to like 415, then 389. So I don't know what they are now. Uh, these two are actually two years old. I have one that's five years old and one that's three years old. So and they are working fine. Uh, they're perfect. Uh, lock store, big mouth mags on both these. Now this one I wanted to show you. I don't know how well you can see that, but in here, you see a JG. This is one of Johnny's new triggers. Um, aluminum shoe. Now this one I have set up a little different. As you can see. Uh, okay, now watch. I wanted, that's, that's it on takeout. Now the reset on this. Like that. I am a reset shooter. I do not do the finger off trigger back out here. I keep my finger on like that. Okay, that's the new one for this. Now he did send me one for this one. Okay, now this was last year's model. Uh, but I have this one. Now you can see it was dirty. I was shooting the other day. So I got him in here to clean up. I was shooting this one the other day. And th this particular trigger is his, uh, I believe it's called Gaston. Is what this one is. And this one's so fine-tuned, I don't need to put this one in yet. Watch this. That's it. Break. See how short that one is? Look at that. So all you block haters out there, so you see the reset and the travel is too far. That's it. And it's 100% safe. Don't press the center. It won't fire. This thing is, is amazing. Uh, so I have this shoe to put on it, or this whole drop-in system, but this one is, is working so fine and so well fine-tuned. Excuse me, I'm actually on my AR bench. Um, especially, you know, four days before a big match, I am not going to chance it and change it. Uh, not unless I absolutely have to. And if I have to do it down there, I'll do it down there. But that is so fine-tuned, so... And it is, believe me, 100% safe. Drop safe. Everything works on it. When you send your gun to Johnny, who is at an FFL place, it's, if you just, 
I'm just going to use this. Well, matter of fact, hold on. I even have another older one. i got a couple older ones. When you call Johnny, and you this is the one that was in here, which I just replaced the other day. Um, beautiful trigger also. It works almost as good as this one. But I wanted to really try these, and I like the blue one because the, the difference wasn't that much to where it was noticeable in this blue and black gun is regulated now to a backup uh, but say this one or even this one um, if you just buy the drop-in trigger you know, it comes in a package something like this, this is an older package this was a for what 42 43 combat striker fired and it was one of the 42 or the 43 but you'll get, they come in some kind of package. Well, that's the actual factory trigger. The other one's in the gun. Um, comes in a package like this, and you install it yourself. And it's fine-tuned and everything done by Johnny. Don't get me wrong there. It's just you're putting it in. And every one of these frames is a little bit different. Plastic, polymer, when it molds, it you know, opens, it shrinks, opens, shrink. So they're not all. If you put 10 of them in a row, you would be lucky to get I don't think you'd ever get all 10 of them exactly the same measurement. There's going to be a difference in there. So anyhow, if you send your gun to Johnny, and then he has, he actually fits the trigger in, works with it, fine-tunes it to that particular gun. Now, if I take this out and put it in this one, it's still going to work, but it's not going to work as fine as it does in this one. Now, granted, this is 34, 17, but the frame's the same anyhow. So, um you're looking at a big difference between just a drop-in. Now, don't get me wrong, believe me. The drop-in, if you have a, uh, a regular Glock trigger and put one of these in, it's like night and day instantly. And I do mean instantly. <clears throat> so, if you can send your gun to John, get a hold of him. Uh, matter of fact, I have, I always keep this right here because people ask. You can pause and look at that. That's his number. That's where you can call him and talk to him. I suggest early in the morning, like 7 to 10, if you can. And talk to him about what you want, what you're looking for. He'll tell you what you can and can't do. And, uh, and if you need to send it to him for a custom Gaston or a drop-in, uh, it's up to you. You get what you, you want to get or what you can afford. But Johnny has always been, uh, I've known him now for probably six years or more. Uh, he's sponsored me all this time. <clears throat> and uh, I don't own a Glock that doesn't have a Johnny's trigger in it. And I think I own eight right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Give Johnny a call. Just go back a little bit and get that number. It's 941-376-4383. And uh, Johnny will work on that for you. So I got, I'm going to clean these. I'm going to move them over to the side here for a minute. I keep asking about this table. This is, a, again, is my AR workbench. I have uh, You can't see, but there's all the tools here. Uh, as far as rifle ARs, BCM is my favorite. Timney triggers are my favorite AR triggers. Excalibur barrels, oh my god, unbelievable. There's the Glock logo and the AR-15. And over here, since I never got a Johnny Banner, I did make a bigger Johnny Custom Glocks decal and put it on this table too. So all that's in there. So now let me shove this over to the side here. And they ask about my kit. Now this was in my rifle bag. That's why this stuff's not like I peeled off, put Glock stuff on it. But you're looking at those two triggers I had out, or three triggers. Okay, they're always in here as backups because everything and anything can happen at any time. So you want to make sure you're covered. So triggers are in there. Uh, if I need to switch to this sight, this sight pattern, or if I need, you know, go into the dovetail for whatever reason, I do it. Earplugs, obviously. Okay, over here, I have different recoil springs set up, different weights. And uh, if I need to, depending on the ammo. Now, I do have ammo worked out for both these. And fortunately, the same recipe works the same in both of them. We put both of them in a ransom rest. 50, 
feet at a ransom rest. Did not use, uh, had the, the actual remote flood trigger, so you're nowhere around the, around the go when you pull the trigger. Both of them were putting my, my hand-loaded competition ammo, five shots of each one, and the first three or four was basically one freaking hole, and then one would come out a little bit. So the hole would be like a circle with a little, like a circle and have like a little, that's too big. Oh, okay, let me use this. So you'd have, say that was the hole, you'd have a little bump out like that in one spot. And that was five shots, groups of five, and both those guns in a ransom rest. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Ransom rest is great for handgun. Uh, here's another plate for the red dots, and then there's block, uh, factory lock parts in there, and there's a slide release, all that stuff. Trigger, of course, batteries, uh, laser lights. Here's just some tools. Again, it's not for everything. Uh, for 99% of the Glock tool is just the one rod. Then you come over here and I have uh, plungers, extra parts in here. Then, I know I shouldn't carry this many with me, but I never know if someone else needs it. By the way, Lucas uh, Gunwell Blue and Blue Grease, best you can get. So if you look at this, these are all the springs and they are color coded on the ends because I never know what I have to do. Uh, like last year I had to, I ran out of ammo because I lent some to somebody else. Thought I had more than I did. And I had to use another guy I had uh, new ammo. Now I have a 10 pound or nine pound spring in, in the one and I had to switch springs to get it to work right. This is extra. Um, of course, Johnny sent that to me. So I'm telling you, if, if you own a Glock, and I, I say this all the time, buy your last trigger first. Go to johnnyglocks.com, check out what he has. I'm telling you, he has something for any type of shooting you want to do. From combat, duty, if you're a police officer or something like that, uh, he has worked with police officers and police departments in the past and military who are running his triggers. Granted, when it comes to police and military, it all has to be tested and approved. So that should be a testament of how good his stuff is to get those two contracts. Now, I'm not saying he's doing every Glock in every military branch, but he has some worked out. Same way with uh, some law, uh, law, law enforcement departments. Allen Ranches. Uh, again, that's the other, some spare parts. So I, I, I put this kit together. Uh, of course, there's all the little springs and everything. So if something would happen, or whoever, uh, a partner I have shooting with me, it's shooting Glock. I have at least two or three of everything in here for the entire, if something breaks, I got it covered. We can fix it on the spot. It would not end our day and say, well, that was it. We got to go home. You know, such and such thing broke and, and uh, ruined it. I wanted to make sure if something happened from having to use different ammo to a major catastrophe, I had the parts in here to work on. And that, there are, there's, there's, I'm just doing not to take everything out, but uh, yeah, it's a good idea to have a kit like that if you do anything. Actually, if you go to the range, have some kind of kit. There's nothing worse than going to the range, looking forward to the day, and then something happens and uh, ruins your entire day. All because you broke a spring or you thought you, uh, you took apart the gun for some reason and a spring flew out, which has happened. You know, you have extra, have backup, and then your day's not ruined. So, big thank you for watching the video. I'm going to go ahead and clean these babies now, get them ready. Uh, I am four days away from the match. And, or five days away. Five days away from the match. And I want to thank Johnny for everything over the years. And I hope this continues. And again, go to johnnyglocks.com. Look what he's got. Give him a call. 941-376-4383. You can either send him your gun and have it done, or you can get the drop in and do it yourself. Either way, when you get Johnny Glock stuff, you're getting top class. 
Thanks for watching and more to come as I can dealing with my uh, father's health. Stay safe, everybody. Talk to you later.